good morning everybody my name is Yun and we're getting milking going here it's 404 in the morning I'm just gonna hit F1 enter on the MPC here you can see push it into session one and we're gonna go and grab some milk cows That's the milk cow barn right there. Look at how much more feed the uh, east side of the barn has. Group one versus the west side. They probably got. 300 kilograms of feed laying on the ground in front of their feed bunk and that's probably good because the cows are going to come out of the holding area when they're done being milked and they're going to want to eat so they'll probably finish this they're pretty much out so they should probably get some more this morning if you guys remember when we uh switched the wires around in these brushes to a tougher wire looks like it's working both brushes are still going hard so that's awesome Hey, time to get up. Hey. Hey, it's time to go to the milking parlor. What are you doing? Let's go. Guess she wants five more minutes. Grabbed our rake from the back of the barn here. We're gonna scrape all the milk, the crop, the pea, any kind of uh, organic material that the cows put in the beds. We're gonna scrape it out. This is gonna prevent some bacteria growth in these beds and keep the cows a lot cleaner. If you're milking three times a day, some guys will actually scrape their beds out three times a day. And um, their, their cows will probably be a lot cleaner than ours. There's still room for improvement here, but the cows are pretty clean, so. The odd one is just a little bit covering crap. More milk in the beds there uh, we've been talking about this cows you can breed them there's a bunch of traits for bulls that you can pick out and milking speed is one of those traits and me and my dad have been talking about it lately milking speed in the parlor it's nice to have cows that let their milk down super quick if there's one cow that's slower than the rest it holds the entire line of 12 cows back so we were looking quite a bit at faster milking speeds 100% is just normal, it's good. And then you can go like, I think there's one as high as 108%. And he's obviously gonna be a really quick milker. But the other end of that is, is he gonna dump all the milk in the beds? I don't know. Um, but it is pretty annoying if you have a slow cow. The other end, the other extreme, I guess, would be a really fast milker that just dumps all of their milk on the ground before they even get into the parlor. So, I don't know, it's just something we've been looking at lately. Probably best just to stay around 100, which would be perfect. So the cows are in the holding area. The beds are raked out by hand, so they're all nice and clean. Now we're gonna hop into the bobcat here, start scraping. But first I'm gonna turn our pump on. So our manure management system in the back of the barn here is just a gutter. It's about three feet deep on this end, maybe one foot deep on that end over there. And it circulates manure through as you're pushing it in. And it pushes it all down into a massive pit underneath the ground here. And you can see this pump is sticking into it. It's an eight inch noon pump. I believe these are manufactured in Ontario. So it's a Canadian pump, gotta be really good, right? And uh, this thing just pumps into one of three valves here. I believe that's the recirculation valve. So this one will go to the end there and it'll keep it flowing so it doesn't build up too much there. And the other two go out to the lagoon. So there's two pipes that go out to our lagoon just in case one would freeze in the winter time and you still have the other option. 
and um, yeah so let's get pushing crap so in the sand room here is where we park the bobcats we've used quite a bit of sand so far so we have a ton of room now it's kind of like a little shop in here but uh, that's the old s130 and then this is it s590 i believe i can't see the sticker anymore but just the one we're gonna grab i'm just gonna quickly check the oil before we get going here this morning She's definitely getting low. It's just below the fill line. So I'm gonna scrape this morning. When we're done milking, I'll probably top it up. So that pump is just going to recirculate for 20 minutes it's on a timer and it'll automatically shut off we're going to find our squeegee and clean this mess up here time to let the ladies back into their group foot baths out this morning Just checking to see if there's any calves this morning before we go back to the milking parlor. And it looks like we got one little baby there. Although it doesn't look little at all, that thing's massive. Look at all these little buggers. They all just watching. They think it's breakfast time, but they gotta wait a couple more hours. Boys. Here you go. Come on. Yep. So we're grabbing group two now. You guys can see all the ladies that went back into group one eating food now. They're just mowing down the rest of the feed that was left there. We might almost feed them 100 kilograms less and this side will definitely get 100 kilograms more this morning. been super finicky lately it opened up about one inch and then it quit opening up and I was just with the remote from the Bobcat there usually if you do it by hand a little bit then you re-engage it it'll close and then it should open up Hopefully it goes all the way up this time. That door has been super sketchy lately. Um, whether it goes up or down or stops halfway in between. But luckily we're able to get it up now. And I'm really happy that wasn't an issue when it was that cold out. Because that would really suck. Right now it's, it's not cold at all. So it doesn't matter if the door stays open extra long. But when it was really cold, if that door isn't shutting or going open properly, that can be pretty freaky. All right, so the last two lines of group two are in the parlor right now, which means the barn is done. But we still got to milk the special needs pack, which is right there. There's about 12 cows in there. 
And then we're also gonna take this lady that calved this morning and we're gonna milk her with those ladies over there right away. Oh, she's way back there. The black one's the one I need. Come on, girl. Okay, okay. Boom, just like that. Awesome, we're done milking now, which means we're gonna clean the parlor off. Gonna start out by hitting the gutter flush and the flush valves for the parlor here. This is the gutter flush. Just gonna rinse out the manure gutters. And then the button we just clicked there does this. This is all recycled water. It's all the wash water, plate cooler water. Dairy farms get a pretty bad rep for using a ton of water, but we use the water a lot here, like multiple times the same water. So it comes out of the well, goes through our plate cooler to cool the milk down. So that's the first use. The second use is the washing of the um, parlor. All of the milk lines, after every single uh, milking, all of the lines need to be washed out because otherwise the milk will get bad in those lines. So they're completely washed out. And then it starts to go into our manure system where it then is recycled constantly over and over again to flush everything out of the parlor. And then it goes to the lagoon and is applied to the fields. And that is fertilizer for the fields and helps our crops grow. So, you know, we do use a healthy amount of water, but we produce a ton of milk for it. And we use the water three or four times over. So it's actually pretty efficient if you look at it that way. All right, F1 enter puts the parlor into milk mode and F2 enter puts it into wash mode. Take the milk line out of the tank, put it into the wash line so it can get clean. doing today me and dad are going to take out a room of calves from our calf barn they've been grouped together and it's time for them to move out i believe they're in room two those are the ones we're going to be taking out so i just stole the new holland wheel loader from our feeder and we're going to go drop this bucket off we're going to hook up the calf mover and load up two rows of 12 calves put them into the group pen calf barn and then we're gonna have to go through the process of cleaning that room out again. Uh, my sister's gonna probably pressure wash it off in a couple days. So we gotta get that room cleaned out. See if my dad wants to undo these hydraulic hoses for me here. Nice. I'll leave the loader there. My dad can line it up. It's pretty tight in here. If I break something. Well, you know, it's just better if the boss breaks something versus me. You can line the loader up. That's the first load. We always take the older side of the room, put them in the barn first. So those ones are gonna be smaller, which is fine by me. They're big, healthy looking calves though, which is good. So they're literally going from that room 
right into this barn but that's not a long distance at all so why can't you just walk them there uh walking calves like that that have never been outside over snow even in the summertime on nice dirt is always incredibly difficult they're super scared it takes such a long time to try and convince them to walk on the dirt or the snow it's a new environment for them so they're super scared it's easier just to load them up on a crate like that and move them even though they're only going like 20 meters aside but it's uh, definitely worth loading them up on a crate versus trying to walk them over the ground. So you guys saw how difficult it was for us to get them on. Now look how difficult it is to get them off. Such silly animals. They just completely rock it off. How old are these calves that are moved out right now? Oh, they're two and a half months. Two and a half months old? You bet. Sweet. And the older ones are even older yet. Up to three months, you think? Or? Oh, yeah. The ones that you just took out, they're older yet. All right. Because we always start filling on that side, so it's only all the oldest and then the youngest. Sweet. One thing we'll do when we're loading these calves into the crate is just push some shavings over the concrete because they're really scared to go on the concrete. So if we kind of trick them, make them think they're still walking on their beds, they go a lot easier up into the thing. And that's the second side of the calf barn moved out. This morning, me and dad are cleaning out this one calf room here. Got that side scooped out already. Just starting with the bobcat here. Um, it's a lot nicer to clean the back rooms out here because we just drive through behind the barns here and we got a pile of manure that we just dump it on with a bobcat. In the front, if we're cleaning out the front two rooms of this barn, we'll literally scoop it with the bobcat into a payloader bucket and then from the payloader bucket uh, we'll bring it to another pile just because there's not a pile in front of the barn. Got to keep it neat there. So yeah, we're just driving it onto this pile right here. So it's a lot quicker to do these two back rooms which is awesome. This pile is getting pretty big. It's got all the straw pack manure from this barn, and then it's got the shavings from that other individual pen barn. And we also dump the alleys from this straw pack barn on this pile. So it's starting to build up. We've already got rid of it once this winter, hauled it out. We're definitely gonna have to get rid of this pile before it starts to thaw out this spring, because otherwise it's gonna be a muddy mess back here. So we're gonna have to do that yet before everything melts out. But we probably still got a month for that, so. And for scooping the actual sawdust out, we just use a regular bucket. We don't have a bucket for our bobcat with a grapple on there. Maybe it would be nice for straw pack, but it's definitely not necessary for this stuff. It scoops up really easily. Even the straw packs in the barn that I haul out with this bobcat go really easily with just this bucket. Uh, we don't see the need on getting a grapple bucket for this thing. Uh, this regular bucket's perfectly fine for us. So it's hard work, eh? Uh, 45 minute coffee break in the morning? Yeah, hard. Really hard. We always have uh, coffee at 10 in the morning. So we'll finish cleaning this room out. Man, what have you been doing this whole time? My side's already clean.
Man, I'm already brooming these things out. They're all, this one's already perfectly broomed out. No sawdust at all. I forgot to notch these out. So now we gotta notch those out and I can re-broom the whole side here. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, yeah. I always have to watch you right now. You're doing a half-ass job. If I wouldn't have been here, we gotta close. We always take this out, right? Hey, I wasn't the one standing on my phone for 15 minutes while I was brewing this I'm, all out. I'm the boss. Oh, you gotta do this one yet. Huh? You gotta do this one yet. That's half-assed. Guys, look at this forecast. This is crazy warm for out here. Like the coldest it gets, even at night, is minus 14, and that's only on one night. The rest is around minus 10. Monday is gonna be, ah, oh, this is just crazy. I'm stoked about this. So you can really expect spring to show up around here mid-April. That's when you can really, it, the snow should be gone by mid-April. I remember we still had snow one year going into May and that's just crazy but um and a lot of it but you know mid-April so this forecast looks incredibly warm for normal uh, which I have nothing to complain about at all I'm looking forward to getting in the tractor again hauling some crop around spread it over the fields roll some field harrow put some seed in the ground maybe should be good check the close-up cows if there's anybody calving right before I go for lunch doesn't look like anybody's calving she might be starting, but I think she's just taking a nap. Anyway guys, that is gonna be it for today's video. If you enjoyed, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below. Check out the Instagram and the TikToks, at SassDutchKid. Merch is at farmfocus.com, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. We'll see you guys later.